look, let's say you are a riot police. You belong to the, to the SWAT team or riot police or military police. Anyway, you're part of the police team that are that sent when there's a riot or when there's an uproar. So you're not sent out for regular cases to arrest people, but I mean, it's really bad stuff going on. So you are called. You go there with your colleagues. Your colleagues have their armor in black. They got their weapons. They got their bulletproof vest. They got their shield. They got their helmet. They got their uh, safety shoes. They're ready. And then you arrive there. And your superior asks you, um, John, what is this for nonsense? I said, sir, I'm ready for duty. And uh, the superior said, John, what is this for nonsense? Where's your armor? It's here. What is here? I don't see anything. I see you wearing a t-shirt with a short trousers. You're going out there. It's cold weather. That's one thing. So you're dressed in a in a very warm manner, but it's cold out there, so you, you will catch a cold, so you will harm your health by doing that. And you have no armor. You know very well you're going to face a riot, right? There's a riot going out there. They're throwing fireworks. They may even use guns, firing guns. They may throw big objects. So you do realize that it's a, almost like a war zone that you're entering in. And you're here in your t-shirt and your short trousers? Sir... I got this. I got this expectation that nobody should come near me unless I want them to. And if they do come near, I can use this tiny knife I have to keep them at a distance. Hold on, the spear says. So, John, you're telling me that if you have 20 rioters with, uh, throwing big rocks, that when those big rocks are coming your way, you're just going to say to those rocks, please turn away. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with you all. Or you just, what are you going to do? If you have 20 big rocks coming your way, uh, we, you're not, you don't carry a shield. You don't have a bulletproof vest. You don't have wear a helmet. You don't even wear warm clothes. What are you going to do? Are you going to run away trying to avoid all those rocks from hitting you? If you have your armor then you will feel a shock, but you won't be harmed. Why are you even here giving this clownish performance? You're hindering us. Now, something like this will never happen, and you know that. But just think about this example. You have this guy who has expectation just because he tells people not to do something, that it will not happen. And he thinks if people don't listen to what I, to what I want, I'll just use violence to make them stop. And he's entering a war zone where there are riots. It's not a literal war zone because it's not in another country. They're not part of the military. But you have riots going on, so it's like a war zone that they're entering. Without the proper armor, they can be killed at any time. And this guy thinks by just having authority can enter in. He has no shield, no armor to protect himself, and he has no power to stop the situation. But he thinks, hey, I can just use authority to... Uh, get away with it. Now look, you know where I'm going in this video. Too often, we rely on securities that don't exist. Privacy, personal sp space, private lives, boundaries, manners, uh, civil rights. We hold on to narcissistic entitlements because they're all folks on us, and we think that just because we can use violence we know violence is wrong, but when it comes to those narcissistic entitlements, if we feel entitled to use violence to guard what we want, we think we're just having that attitude, we'll get ahead in life. Listen, if a narcissist wants to exploit you, he's not going to just jump on you, begin to touch you all over your body, no. He's going to trick you into an agreement, and once you feel comfortable around him, then suddenly he will drug you or put you on hypnosis, then he will undress you and have his way with you. Because he knows if he would just come and jump on you, there would be trouble. So your so-called boundaries, private lives, privacy, and all that, that garbage thing you have, it's not going to guard you from being exploited. And here's the thing. If, people, if you have a whole mob out there ready to knock you out, they can even kill you while they're beating and kicking you. You 
having your whatever First Amendment right, what they have in the United States, or you um, holding on to boundaries or uh, personal space or whatever you're holding on to, it's not going to prevent them from kicking you or even killing you. You need real power in daily life. So stop holding on to false securities that don't exist. Because the moment you hold on to a false security that doesn't exist, you hold on to a false safety that isn't there. And a false safety is really dangerous in disguise. So eventually, it will fail you in a very horrible way. It will fail you and those around you. If you have a child that needs a cure because a, a snake bit your child, you got to be sure that it's the right uh, remedy uh, you're giving your child. Or else you'll give the wrong remedy and the child may die. So you need to be certain of what you're doing. Now look, when we walk by faith, we don't know exactly how everything works out. That's not our part to know. That's why we walk by faith. But we walk in the real power. So stop holding on to stupid entitlements that the world teaches you. Privacy, private lives, personal space, all those narcissistic entitlements are just that. Narcissistic entitlements that don't benefit you in the long run. It will trap you into thinking that you're safe while you're not. Keep agreement with Christ and be at peace.